hi guys so today i'm here again and today i'm going to share one very delicate issue that i faced when i got to the uk trust me like this is you know um a nightmare for me even when i sit down to think about it because i just wouldn't don't know wouldn't know what i would do you know if it had turned other ways so i just want to share with you now even before that uea um actually organized um a pre-departure webinar so the regional manager for sub-saharan you know africa came to ghana to meet um you know prospective students to give us some tips you know on um, what to do and what to you know how to do some stuff when you get to the uk and all that and then when she was concluding she said something and that is actually what i faced so she talked about getting to the uk border and then the work of the border force and how they have the power to deport people they feel you know um i are not here for genuine reasons so yeah i took it serious but i never expected <laughs> i never expected that i am going to face you know that same thing and i'm always very glad that you know at least the lady gave us you know some heads up about this issue so for me i am a very organized person i you know even in ghana i tried my best to ensure that all my documents you know are intact um where i used to live there was this man who was um who had this print shop so i went to him i scanned all my document into a pen drive and then i had photocopies of them so all my documents i took it there my passport my cards my certificates my transcripts my letters receipts everything i took it there i scanned it and then um, i put them you know the soft copies on a pen drive and even in my email and then um i also got some extra photocopies of them just so i know that i am fully you know prepared when it comes to my document so when i got back home i i sorted it out so i had one envelope full of like my original document that is my certificates my transcript my english proficiency test you know receipts swift advice everything in one particular envelope and then another envelope i had all the photocopies of the originals in another envelope and then for my third envelope i had all my visas and you know um, immigration documents like my document checklist my nhs you know reference and you know all those things i had all of them in another you know envelope so just to ensure that you know i was well sorted so i just wrote um on it on all the envelopes so originals photocopies and um how do i call it visas and immigration so i think i left ghana um in the evening that was 10 50 or something and then i got to heathrow at 7 a.m i think there was a bit of delay with the fl with the flight so i got to heathrow at seven trust me um it was quite okay for me on the on the plane and all that now when i got to heathrow after you know coming out from the plane and all that we entered the uk border and there was a long queue like sunday morning there was a very long queue so i joined the queue i realized that you know the border force were stationed where we have the non-eu you know countries our queue was quite different so um the uh, the border forces had their own stations i think there are lots of them about 14 or 15 stations you know attending to us so the queue was just moving but then i noticed that there were two border forces that looks like when people get to them there is a bit of you know delay in there 
but then how do i even care for me i have all my my documents intact everything i have everything ready for them so you know there was this lady who was assigning go to this one go here go here and all that now it got to my 10 and then i was directed to one of these two guys that you know were basically taking their time how do i care i have everything ready so i got there and then the first thing was, um, so why are you here in the UK? And then I said that I'm here for school. He asked me the name of the school, told him University of East Anglia. Okay, can I see your passport? I gave him my passport. Can I see your CAS? I took my CAS letter and I gave it to him. Then I just don't know what happened. The next thing was, can I see your documents, your certificates? Yeah, sure. So I took my transcript. I gave him. Trying to look for my undergrad certificate. I realized it was not in the envelope. Okay. So it looks like he was just stand, like he was just waiting on me to you know give it to him. Now I went through the thing again. I was not finding it, but I saw the transcripts. I put the transcripts out and I gave it to him. And then he asked me, okay, so where are the certificates? Now, because I was not finding my undergrad certificate, then trust me, um, um, the master's program here was based on my undergrad certificate, even though I already had a master's in Ghana. So out of, you know, getting a bit, you know, worried, I just took out my master's certificate that I had. You know, just to let him know that if I don't have my undergrad, I wouldn't be able to do a master. So I just handed up my master's with a transcript. Just then I realized that he lifted the master's certificate up to the light, you know, just to check the authenticity of the certificate. And then the next question that came is, if you have a master's, what are you coming to do again? Why do you want to read another master's? Okay, so I told him that I'm a teacher in Ghana, or I was a teacher in Ghana, and that um, for the subjects that I teach, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I had mastery over all the topics and all that. And one of the topics, we had investment appraisals and all that. So I just wanted to ensure that, you know, I had mastery over that area too. And then it was also for my future, you know, ambitions and all that. Okay. So what school am I coming from or what school was I teaching in? I mentioned the name of the school and he asked me if I had a letter from my school. And I said, yes, however, the school is not sponsoring me. It is self-sponsored, yeah, but still he wants to see the letter. Okay, so I had a letter from my school to the British High Commissioner. So I just, you know, pulled out the, the letter and then I gave it to him. Now, just then, he was just looking at the letter and then he asked me, do I have any like accommodation here in the UK? And I told him, yes, I had already booked for an accommodation. Then he asked me where? And then I had a letter from my landlord because I asked her to, you know, they are a couple actually. So I asked her to, you know, I asked them to give me a letter. So they gave me a letter. And then I also printed extra copies of it. So when I got there, they asked for the letter. I just put out the letter and I gave it to him. Then he picked up his phone, dialed the number of the landlord, and then called the landlord. Just then, I was getting a bit worried. Why? Is there anything wrong? Am I being suspected for anything? Or like, what, what is happening? So it just gave me some time to just, you know, put myself, you know, together, like manage yourself, manage your feelings, because it looks like, you know, I'm, I'm just not understanding it because I see other people come, you know, when they get to the border forces there, you know, they don't even spend like two seconds. They just leave. So what is happening to me? Why am I being delayed here? So 
just then I realized that she tr like he, he tried dialing the landlord's number and then he asked me for my bank statement. I had my bank statement ready. So I just pulled out my bank statement and then I handed it. Now the next question, do you have an, the bank app on your phone? And I told him, yes, I had a bank app. Okay, so can you open the bank app? I want to see if the balance of the fees or the balance of your bank statement is in the bank app. Then, I don't know what happened, but when I was in the plane, I, or when we were just about to land, I took out my SIM and then inserted the UK SIM in there because I just wanted to inform my family back home that I had landed. So because I took out my SIM and inserted a new SIM, I didn't have access to the bank app. And even to date, I've not been able to access any of my bank apps here in the UK. So I just, I was just informing him that, okay, so I have the bank app all right. However, I don't have access to it because when I was landing, I took off my SIM. And because I've taken off my SIM, I don't have the access to my bank app currently. So I tried opening the bank app truly to him. And then it was still requesting that um, it was just no opening. I don't know. It, it would try loading and then it would take me back again to input, like to insert my password. So it was just not working. And then he, just then, my landlord actually picked up the call. So that conversation ended there. And then he picked up, I heard that he was asking the landlord if truly he's aware that a lady called this and that is taking her property like is coming to you know um, um um settle in her property and all that and then my landlord you know assured him that yeah she she is aware and then i've made payments and all that now he asked of receipt of my fees deposit luckily i had my swift advice with me so i took the swift i, I took the swift advice and then i gave it to him like, it looks like something was going on. I just didn't know what was going on. And unfortunately, I was still not finding my, um, my undergrad certificate. So upon all the information and everything I had given him, he was still not just satisfied. He still was insisting that he wanted to see my undergrad certificate. And I was also quite confused that I know I had packed my items right. So what is happening? I was big, like I was beginning to, at this time, as I'm speaking to you, I have stood there for more than 30 to 45 minutes. And when I turned back, like all those people I was familiar with in the queue had all gone, like they've all passed. I checked my, my, the time on my phone and I realized that the bus I had booked, the time was far gone. So I was quite, I was getting so worried. I didn't have anyone who was, you know, coming to meet me at Heathrow or anyone who was coming to direct me as to what to do. I was just alone. Like, I was quite getting confused. I don't know what to do. So I was just there. And then he was telling me to look for it. Otherwise, he's not giving me, you know, the chance to go. And I was trying to explain to him that I had it. I just don't know how the thing is, you know, not part of my documents right now and that um if i didn't have an undergrad certificate i wouldn't have a master i wouldn't be able to even do a master's in the first place so um i just don't know but i even have a copy like i have a soft copy of it so if he wants me to show him the soft copy i showed him the soft copy and then he was still shaking his head now <laughs> the funny thing here is is it funny or unfortunate even when i was in the queue the other border force, you know, I told you there are two men that I saw them to, you know, be quite strict. The other one was speaking to one guy. And he had, he had been speaking to this guy even before it got to my turn. And the funny thing is, when the guy gives him any of, you know, his documents or anything, he lifts it up to the light and then he will shake his head. Then he gives it back to the guy. Then the guy will say something, then he will still say, shake his head. Like, it looks like he's just not taking anything the guy was saying. So I was just, you know, getting a bit worried that, why? Is it is it something like, is something going on with me? Or what is it? Because I see people get to the, you know, other border forces and then they just, you know, 
two seconds, three seconds, like they wish them well and then they leave and all that. So what is happening to me? I was like, I was so devastated. Just then, I just thought that, oh, okay, why don't I go through the other documents that I have again? Like, you know, I had three envelopes. Like I told you, I had my originals, my photocopies, and then the visa and immigrations. So just then it occurred to me that why don't I go through the other two documents, like the other two, because for the originals, I had gone through them so many times and I was still not finding it. But when I just brushed through the others and I didn't find it, I was like, maybe I may have left it at home or something. But I was very sure that I had packed everything, guys. Like, I was like, I was so perfect in my packing. I knew that I just couldn't leave it. I just don't know what happened. Like, is someone setting me up or what? So then it still occurred to me that I have to check. I took the other two, started going through them one by one, one by one, one by one. And voila, this was the certificate in there. I just pulled it out and I told him that I've just found it. He looked at it, he took my passport and then he stamped it and told me I can leave. Guys, at this point, I was so wary. Like, I, I was, my spirit had just left my body. <laughs> because I just started calculating how much money I have spent. How much preparation I have done into, you know, this the kind of food stuff I was bringing, like how I had psyched my mind about living into a new country, going to, like, I had watched videos, I had read, like, I had listened to lots of podcasts and all that. I had prepared my mind. And then I got to the airport. And, you know, things started, you know, going some way it was just like a first shock for me so even when he told me to leave i was so confused like what where am i going now basically because the time for my bus had passed and i just don't know what i was going to do like what no one is there to come and meet me i don't know anybody here like i am just alone so just when I went, you know, to pick my luggage and all that, one man approached me and was like, you see that weather officer? Don't mind him. Last time he did the same thing to me, even not for the fact that I have very good records here in the UK. I think they would have deported me because of him. But then, just be free, just take it out. Like, just don't be worried or don't be afraid. You know, you are in a very good place and all that. So that was some sort of like, a reassurance to me that you know it's just one of it you see guys me all the time i say that what someone would do and may work for them only me maybe i would try it and it would not work for me so i was very very careful in putting my documents together and you know there are lots of people who try to do you know put fake stuff you know together just to be able to pass through maybe you may be you know, fortunate with that. But for me, I know that when it comes to issues like this, I am not fortunate. When I try to do something that, you know, everyone is doing and then may not be the ideal thing, me alone, just me alone, I would be caught. So I won't even try. I won't try. Like, I won't try at all. So I don't know for you, if you know you are, you know, just like me, just ensure that everything is intact. Because even as I tried my best, I still faced just this small challenge. Just this challenge. Wanted, like, it would have cost me a lot. It would have cost me a lot. And even after the whole thing, like I felt so bad. Like I felt so devastated myself. And then I had to go and book a new bus. And the time the bus would be coming 
was like about after four or five hours i had to just you know stand at the bus station it was so cold like i was just so new to the weather i was feeling so cold i was feeling so sad so lonely you know even when i see people like my family back at home try to call me i just didn't feel like picking up because i I, I just wanted to be alone. I just wanted, you know, I just wish that I didn't even take this at the first place because it was, I am, I am, you know, someone I highly, I, I, I easily give up basically. So I was like, why, why did I even, you know, why did I even take this decision at all? Why did I even try this at the first place, guys? But then later when I came back to my senses, I'm like, you see, <laughs> Sometimes we make some statements because we have been faced with a particular, you know, situation. But then I'm actually glad that I was able to make it. So this is basically my near escape story. My near deportation escape story. And you see, I just, I'm just doing this because I want a lot of you to learn from it. That yes, some people may get through it, but maybe you may not get through it. So just make sure that you are doing things right and then um, you are taking yourself out of trouble because after spending so much money, you wouldn't want to get here and then be taken back again. All right, so I'll end it here and see you another time. Bye.